The findings in these reviews will be evaluated in the aggregate, and then actions will become part of our integrated plan. Some weaknesses that uh, we are investigating and will continue to investigate really include our degraded non-conforming condition process, our operability evaluations, uh, use of vendor manuals and the upgrade of those manuals, our configuration control of safety-related equipment, our equipment service lives, safety evaluations and 5059 screenings, and our oversight of vendors. Now on slide 14, we recognize that our integrated plan will identify our issues, and yet the overarching objective of the entire plan is to improve our performance long term. And we really ensure this by doing an eclectic evaluation of each of the individual elements of the plan and then rolling those analysis up and then doing an overall analysis uh, of all the issues. We also do this by developing smart corrective actions with the appropriate man management oversight of the review uh, and implementation and closure of each of those actions. By implementing management changes to strengthen and challenge our oversight of the station and our recovery efforts. We also do this by employing external sources. We've talked about some of the folks and the help that we've gotten from the industry. That actually to lead and oversight our improvement activities and also provide us counsel and, and direction. Also by providing long-term oversight, and these are both by internal and external sources of oversight. And then we provide check and adjust points within our action plans uh, and, in, and interim actions to make sure that we're staying uh, on the path and we're making the improvements at the rate that we expect. Now what's different today? Well, we're utilizing a systematic approach to evaluate where we are. We recognize that our performance issues are broad. And we have to dig deep to be able to get those on the surface so we can get forth the right actions to correct them. And really it, it's looking at, at the cultural level and getting in it at the cultural level to ensure these are sustained long term. Before I turn this back over to Mr. Gates, um, there's a couple of points I want to reinforce to you. I clearly understand the significance of the, the position that we're in, and I hold myself responsible for our unacceptable performance. I've never been in this situation before, but you have my word, I will fix it. We're taking a long-term approach, and really that's looking at this from a, of a performance improvement perspective and it really starts with digging deep to get these issues uncovered and then put forth the right action to correct it. I commit to you that we'll focus on nuclear safety each and every day. That's our primary value, our primary focus, and we won't deviate from that. I'll turn this back over to Mr. Gates. Thanks, Dave, <clears throat> and to you, Mr. Chairman, and the Commission for giving us this opportunity to speak to you today uh, on our plan. As Dave said, uh, and the whole OPPD team, we're serious about safety. We understand that. We understand our obligations to the industry and our responsibilities. I have the privilege of uh, working in this nuclear industry for almost almost 40 years now. And I know what Fort Calhoun Station is capable of. I know what the people are capable of there. And then with personal interaction, I know their willingness to do the right thing. We will not uh, return Fort Calhoun to operation until we're satisfied and recommend it along I know with the uh, Cal pit process from the NRC's point of view. You have my commitment, personal commitment, CEO and, and Gary, that we'll get this fixed, we'll do it right, we'll do it in a very thorough, very professional, and a very transparent manner. Thank you, and we would appreciate your questions at this time. Thank you for that uh, presentation. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Sinney. Well, my thanks to each of you for the messages that you've delivered here today and for the update you've given on the, the status of actions at Fort Calhoun Station. I had a chance to visit there. I, I can't recall specifically when it was. It was probably over a year and a half ago, and it was well before the, uh, the flooding event and uh, some of the recent events that the NRC staff panel talked about. And um, I appreciated the opportunity, though, to visit the station and, and talk to the women and men who worked there. Um, I'm going to touch on a few items, and I want to acknowledge, I know that we're, as the NRC staff panel indicated, early in the process, so I acknowledge that up front, but I'm still going to ask some questions, and please respond to the extent that you have the information or details, and you can uh, give some indication of where things stand. Uh, I'll start with a very general question. Mr. Gates, you had mentioned 
that uh, your board uh, and others are fully supportive of making the resources available that the station needs to take the actions that will be uh, necessary. And I appreciated your um, commitment to that. That will obviously be key. If things aren't resourced, they can't be accomplished. However, I know as we look forward on some post-Fukushima actions, Fort Calhoun, as other stations may be receiving requests for information and other compulsory actions, are there areas where you feel that your response to what NRC might require on those items, which again, some level of detail about those actions has already been communicated from the NRC staff to the industry, so you must have some general awareness of what you're looking at in terms of a post-Fukushima response to the NRC. Do any resources in terms of key niche expertise compete with things that you have, uh, commitments you will have to make under this uh, 0350 process, and if so, how will you balance that? Let me uh, start that, Commissioner, if I could. Um, the, uh, the way we're going to handle those capacity requirements to handle both Fukushima, we also are in the process of transitioning to NFPA 805. Uh, we have the emergency preparedness uh, rule that's out that we're working through. We have the cyber and all those issues. We're specifically bringing those separately out of the organization to be managed uh, in, in concert with the line organization, but in a separate uh, function so we get the right focus on it and we devote the right resources to it. As a matter of fact, we have set ourselves an internal goal that we want to lead the country in one of the Fukushima items, which is increasing our station blackout time as we recover from this effort. We think that's a proactive uh, message and also one that our plant can get its arms around and execute. Uh, being a smaller PWR, we've got a lot of options uh, in that area. So we plan on leading those efforts and not just reacting to them. As a, as a unit. I'd let Dave uh, any, and put some more color around that, but we, we do understand the additional capacity and we provided that uh, instructionally in the organization as well as resource wise. As, as Mr. Gates has pointed out, it's exactly what we've done. We've, uh, I'll say, compartmentized, but we have designated people in the organization uh, focusing on just the Fukushima pieces, uh, going to the various uh, working groups and committee meetings looking broadly across the industry on uh, the input on what are other sites doing. Uh, in some cases, doing the analysis or what's the best practice to be able to implement the, the right structure or the right process. Uh, we're doing the same thing with all the other initiatives. Uh, one I'll also point to is the security order. And you know that is going down the path and has been even, uh, if you can, can believe this, even during the flood, we had activities that were still going on in terms of planning, uh, processes, et cetera, to get ready for our actions as soon as the floodwaters recited uh, to get in there and do the work for the security order. So that's, that's all ongoing. Okay, thank you. And to continue a bit on this theme, but turning now to external support, which you've indicated that you, where appropriate, you will supplement your efforts. You have a, a partnership with, with Exelon. I'd like to turn to the concept, though, of sustainability in recovery versus external support. And I'm not saying that uh, external support should be spurned. There's a lot of really valuable external support, uh, both Exelon and other uh, industry-wide sharing of, of lessons that you can tap into. As a matter of fact, one of the things I recall from my visit to Fort Calhoun Station, which is in walking from one part of the facility to another, I spoke to one of the station uh, executives about the fact that he had had an opportunity through IMPO to be at another station and how valuable he and others at Fort Calhoun found those opportunities. Again, it's a comparing of, as he put it, how we do business versus how other people do business. And so uh, obviously reaching out and not becoming insular is very important, but you do need all of your measures to be sustained for Fort Calhoun Station over the long term. It's this peril of having, you know, fixers come in, but then they haven't really, once once they depart, had, do you really have you invested in something that will be very enduring for the station? How are you approaching that? The, uh, and I'll let uh, some more comments be made, but the way we're approaching that, <clears throat> that's an excellent point. Uh, as, as Dave said, we've integrated the recovery crew right now. It's about two-thirds OPPD people and one-third uh, outside resources. So we want our folks to learn the lessons and then come back into the line organization. Uh, our plant manager, uh, Tim Nellenbach, is going on loan to IMPO. 
and uh, he'll be spending his uh, time in a very detailed program in our cooperation with IMPO to raise standards and understand what's going on around the country because as a single unit, single operated unit, uh, being insular is a um, something you really have to guard against and we're, we have put those into our plan as well. So we have integrated crews uh, with the uh, folks and the other piece is we, we are going to stay with an outside support as long as necessary until we're satisfied that we have the, the unit sustainable. And it may be a prolonged period of time. We're not sure what that will be. We are starting those discussions, but we recognize um, that particularly in a single unit of our size, it is always going to be a challenge for insularity, if that's a word. I may have just invented one. I hope not. Um, or the fact that um, we will always be capacity challenged in the degree of in the way we looked at this, um, you know, you have a station staff that's running and typically every unit has excess capacity that they use for special projects and everything. So we put in new steam generators in head in 2006 and we, we grew capacity with a single uh, vendor. It was Bechtel at the time. And then we reduced down to our normal staff and we were putting in projects. But if you, the ones you just mentioned, Fukushima and the other ones we alluded to, take additional capacity and then layering on top of that. So we're going to always be, I believe, in a position to need additional capacity beyond what we have. Uh, we had a lot of additional capacity due to our extended power up rate, which we were pursuing, and we have now suspended to focus those resources on this recovery. As a matter of fact, that extended power up rate has provided us some great information because we were doing system reviews to do that, to raise the power level. So we have a lot of information from deep dives from the ex extended power up rate that will serve us well as we go through this recovery effort. Dave, I'm, but we're internalizing those lessons. Okay. Yeah, I, I, we had actually a lot of discussion up front because we were concerned with the same thing that, you know, once the Calverly leaves, you know, what, the, what does that leave the rest of us? And so I, my analogy is, is that the ramp up is very quick to bring on the additional resource, but the, the, the there's a slow decay curve of, of, of getting those resources out. And the intent of that is, is that there's a, that learning has to take place, that there's oversight and challenge as we continue once the plan is up and performing at the level that we expect, we want to continue that. And so there's a slow removal of this external resource uh, as we're building, you know, our knowledge, improving our performance, and really culturally sustaining that, that new type of culture we want in our organization. That's, that sounds like a very ap appropriate way. You don't want an abrupt removal of external support because uh, uh, its gradual removal, I think, will allow the station uh, to adjust back over time. And military sense, we call that surge capacity, but um, the additional capacity that you're talking about. The challenge, of course, will be that with the actions that NRC has under contemplation for Fukushima, all of the industry will be surging at the same time. So there's going to be uh, limited, as I call them, smart nuclear people across the country to put on some of these questions. You have a very near-term need in terms of your recovery process from the O350. So um, it sounds like you've done a lot of thinking about that up front. I appreciate that. In my brief remaining time, I'm going to ask you, although it's not really central to today's meeting, I can't help but have a curiosity about the extreme flooding event that you experienced. As you think about that at a high level, do you feel that there are generic lessons for the industry that you're going to be able to draw from that extreme natural event? And is there anything that you could share in terms of kind of inter-organizational or inter-agency cooperation, state, FEMA, and others? Do, will you be looking on any uh, lessons learned there that you could feed back into other people's lessons learned system? Um, we have a detailed lesson learned um, the document that's uh, still under development but has quite a bit of legs under it that address those issues, and we, we certainly will. We do have, we think we can offer to the industry um, some insights, um, and I would just give one in, in the interest of time, and, and Dave may have others. I think it's the length of time that you may be in an external event. Um, most plan events uh, pretty quick, typically, but external events can end up being very, very protracted, and that brings on a whole new set of challenges. As uh, when the chairman was out seeing us, uh, I mean, to the point where you're carrying uh, copy paper in by hand just to, to run procedures for operators to use and, and those kind of things. So I think the looking at the length of time is just an example of one of the one of the insights.